Hi everyone, this is Nia and today I'm going to be painting mushrooms in more of a loose doodle style compared to what I'm used to, but I hope you guys still enjoy this one. I'm going to just begin by sketching it out with pencil first and my small sketchbook here. And while I'm doing this, let me just show you the reference picture which inspired me to paint this one. So this is the reference image that I chose for this one. I like how the tiny mushrooms are growing out of the tree branch. And I'm just going to keep that idea in mind while creating my own composition. So while I was filming this, this was my only dark pencil that was available to me. And this is a 6B, but I would suggest for you to use 2B instead because it was a bit hard erasing this one. But besides that, I'm just sketching out the main branch first to make sure it's centered in the composition. Then I'm just going to draw the mushrooms around it. I'm trying to draw this out lightly, even though it doesn't really look too light considering this is a 6B but I assure you I was trying to draw lightly. What I'm basically trying to do here is just to draw out clusters of mushrooms. I try to vary the size and also the shape of the cap slightly, especially for the larger ones. I try to make the bottom a little bit frilly so the composition looks a bit more dynamic and flowy. Instead of just drawing out the mushrooms and positioning them randomly on the branch, I like to personally draw them out in clusters because I find it's easier to compose each cluster so they look nice together. And while I'm doing this, I find it a bit easier to draw out the caps first because I find that it gives a better overview of the composition of each cluster. However, if I want to play around with the depth of the positioning, so ones which might be in front or at the back, I might draw the stem at the same time before drawing out the other mushroom surrounding the cluster. This is just a suggestion and basically what I experienced while I was drawing this, but always find ways which are a bit easier for you to draw your own composition. You don't have to follow the exact instructions. For a little bit of added color in the composition, I also decided to add patches of moss and that's pretty much it. I'm just going to fix some mushrooms or add on a little bit more until I'm satisfied with the overall composition. For this painting, here are the colors I'll be using. Hansi Yellow Medium by Daniel Smith Sap Green by Holbein Paints Grey Bluish by Schmincke Titanium Gold Ochre by Schmincke Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith Quinciana by Daniel Smith Mineral Violet by Holbein Vermilion by Holbein and also Bleed Proof White by Dr. P.H. Martins And as for the outline, I'm going to use my Sakura Micron pen in sepia, size 1 Let's begin to paint. I'm going to make two mixtures here. The first mixture is titanium yellow ochre with buff titanium and the second mixture is quin sienna with mineral violet. I'm using my small brush straight away because the mushrooms are quite small since the whole composition is fairly small. It's an A5 size and I use the light creamy color as the base color and the quin sienna for the top of the cap. It's up to you how much mineral violet you want to mix into the Quin Sienna, but the more mineral violet, the darker the color will be and the more muted it will be. After a while, I also decided to use a bit more Quin Sienna so the color is a little bit brighter, but this is completely up to you. I like to use a light to medium consistency for the base color and then use a medium consistency of the darker brown for the top of the cap. I think I mentioned this before in my previous videos when I was using the sketchbook, but the paper is a little bit more damaged than I want it to. It's getting kind of sensitive, so I do have to adjust my way of painting to the condition of my paper. This is why you'll see me using the pulling technique after I put down the darker brown on top of the cap. You'll see me go back in with a clean damp brush to pull the dark brown lower and this will create the softer transition. However, if your paper is completely fine and in normal condition, 
you have to be a bit more careful with this because if you are painting on a very small scale like I am and the paper is puddling that dark brown will just go everywhere on that wet surface so you do want to make sure that the surface is a little bit damp only so the paint can travel slowly or you can even leave it to completely dry then use the technique that I'm using here which is to paint on the darker brown on top of the base layer after it's completely dry then use a clean damp brush to pull the dark brown to create that transition so those are the two options in terms of my painting I am leaving the base color wet or fairly damp because the way damaged paper work is that it absorbs the paint instead of the paint drying on the surface and therefore it can travel instead of just seep into the paper. So this is why I'm helping it with a pulling technique but hopefully you guys can ignore this and follow the instructions that I mentioned earlier. I just don't want to waste the sketchbook so hopefully it doesn't confuse you guys. For some of the larger mushroom caps, you'll see me painting on lines following the cross contour lines of the mushroom cap. This is just to add on a little bit more detail since I have the space for them. So from here on, I'm just going to finish painting the rest of the mushroom caps. You can somewhat vary the shade of the mushroom caps. For the smaller ones, I like to make them a little bit lighter so I would use less of the dark brown mix. And for some of the larger ones, as before, I like to add on the lines. But because I want the lines to be quite distinct, I would make sure that the base color or the initial layer is fairly dry so the lines won't blur out too much. I think I have a pretty good coverage of the mushroom cap so far and I'm going to move on to paint the bottom of the mushroom caps wherever they're visible. For that I'm going to use the same light cream color plus a little bit of paints grey bluish. So that's titanium gold ochre of titanium with a tiny bit of paints grey bluish. After I've painted a light coating, I'm just going to add more paint grey bluish in the same mix to make it even darker. And I'm going to layer this on top of the previous layer, but only to the part closest to the center and right under the cap. So there should be a little bit of a dark to light gradient from the middle of the cap going outwards. As for the moss, I like to use a light yellow green first so I use sap green with Hansa yellow medium I like to place just splotches of this color around using my small brush and creating textures with the tip of my brush and then I follow this up using more sap green in the mix to create a darker green and I work downwards what I'm trying to do here is basically to create layers of moss and this can be tricky if we're directing it downwards because it might end up looking flat if we don't play around with the value. That's why I like to use the light yellow green with the darker green here to represent taller moss where the yellow green is the taller moss closer to the light and the darker green represents parts which are in shadow. And these values should also help make the texture a little bit more distinct. Once I've painted the moss, I'm going to move on to paint the branch. For the base color of the branch, I'm going to use a mix of Quinciana Mineral Violet with a little bit of paint spray bluish to darken the color slightly. 
Notice how when I mix my colors, I don't mix the whole batch. So you can see parts on the left has a bit more paints gray bluish and the brown is a little bit darker compared to the part on the right hand side. This is so I have easy access to both tones without having to mix it in the middle and I can change between those two colors while the surface of the previous color is still wet. So as you can see on the right hand side I like to use the slightly darker brown in comparison to the left hand side where I like to use the slightly lighter reddish brown. While the surface is still wet, I also like to take some of the moss green from the previous mixture and I like to dot it around just to give some bits of green on the tree branch. But because the surface is still wet, it's just going to somewhat blend, creating a very subtle green. While painting on the browns, I don't worry too much about avoiding the stems of the mushrooms because they are very thin and it's quite difficult to do that. Later, I'm just going to go over the stems again with bleed proof white so it's completely fine to paint on top of them. I'm using a slightly larger brush here but it is still quite small since I am trying to avoid the mushrooms and painting right on the moss. When I'm painting with this, I will leave out some white negative space. It's not really intentional but because the brush is small and I'm trying to cover a lot of area, I will end up leaving some white negative space but it's completely fine. In fact, I actually like them because I just find that it makes the whole painting look a bit less bulky and also I find that it sort of looks like small light reflections. From here, you can somewhat tell which area is still wet and which part is dry. The branch sticking upwards is fairly dry because the color is now faded. So I'm going to go back in with the same dark brown mixture that's from Quin Sienna, Paints Grey Bluish and Mineral Violet in a slightly thicker consistency now. And I try to paint on uneven jagged lines in different thicknesses to try to create the texture of the tree branch. For the left side of the branch, I tried to use a slightly thinner consistency and I also tried to make the lines a little bit thinner, but this will also vary. I also like to switch my brush and use my smaller brush to add on finer lines. For the branch sticking upwards, I intentionally made the textures go diagonally just to give this painting a little bit more dynamic. As for the bottom of the branch, I tried to make the lines look less distinct. I don't pay as much attention to this bottom portion because I want the top portion to be more in focus. And I also made the texture or the lines follow the shape of the branch itself instead of going diagonally as the branch sticking upwards. At this point, I feel like we have pretty good coverage, so I just want to play around with the values again. The moss at the bottom was looking a bit too light in comparison to the rest of the painting, so I added the dark green mixture, which is from Sap Green and Paints Green Bluish. Then what I'm doing here is adding darker values on some of the mushroom caps by glazing a bit of the blue-green mix, which is a mix of buff titanium, titanium gold ochre, and a little bit of paints gray bluish where the caps might be in shadow. After looking at the composition again, I just felt like adding more mushrooms on the left side here, so I ended up sketching a couple more. Of course, this is optional, and by the way, if you don't want to draw out your own composition, I will also have the outline available in my coffee shop. I'm just going to paint these two mushrooms the same way as I did the previous mushrooms, and then I'm going to move on to the background. I'm just going to do a loose wash for the background. I'm going to use the same green colors as the moss. 
but in a very watery and light consistency. Firstly, I'm using the yellow green mix from Sap Green and Hansi Yellow Medium. In some areas, I also play around with the consistency where parts might be a little bit thicker in consistency, but I just want to make sure that the background color is light enough in comparison to the main branch so it doesn't take away the focal point. I like to also mix in some of the browns from my palette or if you want a brighter vibrant brown you can just use quince sienna in a very thin consistency you can glaze it over the green or just dot it in patches while the surface is still wet so it will naturally create a nice soft transition between the colors note that i also switch to a larger brush for this so i can cover more area i'm also using a soft brush so it holds more water and this way i don't have to keep reloading my brush too much For a little bit of added texture and interest to the painting, I also like to add splatters for the background. I'm just using a thin consistency here while the surface is still damp for those splatters because I don't want those splatters to be too distinct. For the bottom part of this painting, for the background, I'm going to use more of a darker green. This way, it looks like the light is coming from above. After I've covered the background, I'm just going to clean up some of the edges. Then after this, I felt like it needs a bit more vegetation around the composition. So here I'll just be adding small ferns as well as different types of moss that I can think of. I'm not really going to go too overboard with this and I'm also not going to add too much detail because I still don't want them to take away from the mushrooms themselves. I'm also going to add some berries later on and this is so I can incorporate a little bit of red into the composition. If you feel uncomfortable to draw these extra elements freehand, you can also outline them or sketch them out using pencil first so it's a little bit easier to paint with the guides. So as an example, I wasn't sure where I want to place the berries. This is why I ended up sketching them out with pencil first. And then I used vermilion for the main color. While I was painting the berries, I tried to paint uh, the berries which are not touching each other. This way, these berries have a chance to dry first. Then I go back in with a lighter consistency to paint the berries behind the ones that I've already painted. This is basically to suggest depth without having to paint on details like shadows and such. For the tip of the berries, I also use this dark color to just paint a dot. And for that, I use the dark brown mix, the same mixture as I use for the tree branch. Next here I'm painting the stems of the mushrooms which are sticking out of the branch. For this I use the same cool grey mix as before, so that's from Buff Titanium, Titanium Gold Ochre as well as Paints Grey Bluish and I use a very thick consistency for this in order for the color to stand out. As for the stems of the mushrooms within the branch, I use a medium to thick consistency of bleed proof white and I also use my very small brush in order to get thin lines for each of the stems. You can also play around with the shape of the stems by making it wiggle or curve so the composition doesn't look too stiff. 
So from here on, I've basically painted all of the elements. I just want to add on a bit of detail or if I want to fix certain colors to be a bit more vibrant. In this case, I want to add the detail of the mushroom textures and also clean out some edges or add highlights to the berries. You can also add white highlights to the mushrooms if you want to make them look kind of shiny. This is completely up to you and after that I'm going to finish everything off by outlining the mushrooms and the rest of the elements. To outline I'm using my Sakura Micron pen but if you want the outline to be a bit more subtle you can also use colored pencil like a brown colored pencil but you just want to make sure that the pencil is very sharp if you are painting at a very small scale like what I'm doing here. Once I'm done with the outline, I just want to look at the overall painting again and look at certain parts where I want to just add additional final touches. I ended up adding more of the detail for all of the mushrooms. This part will vary according to your taste and how you want to adjust and balance out your final painting. So that's pretty much it for this painting. I know it's not my usual style of mushroom painting, but I hope you guys still enjoyed this one. I might even do another mushroom painting in my usual style sometime this season because it's just a subject that I love to paint. Like usual, all the list of tools as well as my social media links will be in my description box. If you're still here, thank you so much for watching till the end and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!